Chapter Six: The Drawing. Now every family has their own Christmas family traditions. Sometimes it's caroling. Sometimes it's Christmas shows or concerts. Sometimes it's even a Christmas party, which I might add I will be having. And to my friends, you better be there. You see, there's a church in my town that we don't belong to, but puts on one of the greatest things ever. A living nativity, and they welcome everybody. I'm sure you've seen those shows where actors pretty much just do the Mary and Joseph bit, and then we witness the birth of Jesus, and the shepherds come, and the three kings come. Yes, I said three kings. Some of you say three wise men, but whatever. You sound like real wise guys. That's all I have to say. Anyway, this was something a bit extreme. These people almost did the entire Bible in about an hour and a half. See, they would start out with the Garden of Eden. Hmm, why does that sound familiar? Then they would move on to some prophets prophesizing the birth of Christ, and then they would pretty much skip the rest of the Old Testament, whatever, and jump right into the New with the Annunciation. To say the least, this thing was impressive. The talent, the sets, even though the effects were a little cheesy, they weren't unbearable. My parents and I pulled up in the parking lot, and we went into the church's lobby, a fairly big place. We made our way to the actual church in the Garden of Eden. Confused? I'll get to that. I veered off and found myself in the church's gymnasium. Everyone was getting ready for the giant cookie and hot chocolate party after going through the living nativity. I looked around and then saw a bulletin board. I went over to it and saw a collection of drawings of the nativity scene. In one spot, I'll admit, there was a sloppily drawn Mary and Joseph, and between them was an X with a circle on top and a smiley face on the circle. Now, if you disregard the smiley face. The drawing, which was clearly supposed to be the baby Jesus, looked eerily like the same circle with the X quote sticker. I had it in my pocket and I pulled it out and put it right up next to the drawing. They were the exact same thing. I then looked in the corner of the drawing and saw my name, D. Wilcox. Oh my gosh, this sticker thing was my drawing. Just then, I turned around to see Michael, Amy. Nicholas, Monica, Monica's friend Samantha, and all behind them was Flynn. Good. I'm glad you're all here. I'm guessing Flynn filled you in on what's going on. Yes, Daniel, and I guess I have to apologize for what I said earlier. There might be a treasure involved, Monica said. Apology accepted. Samantha, Monica said you knew a little bit about the legend. I also introduced her to the group. Well, there's something about. A drawing that we uncovered at your house, and I think there was something about a key. Well, that would make sense. Group, specifically Flynn. Does this look familiar? I held up in one hand the quote sticker, and then with my other hand I pointed to the drawing. Danny, they're exactly the same. Michael said. I guess the legend is true. The Carol the Crib is a real thing. I never thought. I thought it was always a silly legend, but. Now I guess it's the real deal," Samantha said. "Oh, it's real. This started with me hearing and seeing verses from Christmas carols that led me to the next clue. But now I'm seeing drawings. Jack and I discovered this last night. Flynn, is there more? Actually, there is. There's supposedly a set of phrases with lines blacked out. It's sort of like a poem, and the blanks are where the verses go from the carols. Do you have this supposed poem?" Flynn explained, since paper comes from trees, silence, tree huggers, that the supposed poem would come from the tree of knowledge. I then smiled and put my hands behind my back and paced back and forth as if I were the captain of a starship. Come on, you didn't really think I would let this story go without at least one Trek reference. All right, crew. We've traveled through space to get to this point. Nicholas started to raise his hand.、Uh, Danny, we didn't travel through. Not now. This will be an expedition of the band of adventurers who discover the crib of Christ. Their mission: to connect all the clues and find the manger. To bring to a safe environment, possibly a museum or the library. Flynn interjected. Yeah, right. To boldly uncover where no one has uncovered before. That's when I stopped, brought out a bag. From it, I put on my fedora. I slid my hand across the brim. I also pulled out my satchel and whip from the bag. The rest of my caravan looked at me like I was crazy. And frankly, what else is new? But to get off topic real quick, 
because I did say I would return to this, the whole church and the garden thing. Yeah. So just as the Bible begins, the whole living nativity starts out with the Garden of Eden. They had a giant projection screen that would show some nature shots, and then the screen would eventually roll back and show the Garden of Eden with two people playing Adam and Eve. And they would come out, and the narrator would describe every move they made. To be fair, it looked nothing like the real thing. Believe me, I know. Anyway, like the story, Adam and Eve ate the apple and were banished. Sometimes there's actually a guy that played the devil, and he was really good at it. Evil like nobody's business. Anyway, we made our way from the gymnasium to the church to watch the opening Garden of Eden. I then heard the narrator say, or I guess sing, this. That was it. The song, I hope, did know that there were two more words after those three, but this is Little Town, so what could that mean? Guys, I heard another one, I then whispered. Danny, it's okay. I heard it too, Samantha said. Soon everyone else in my group stated that they heard it too. Maybe this is contagious. Perhaps this had something to do with the word little. Also, why would the narrator stop and have this song come in? Then I thought, little? Tree? Little room with a tree? Of knowledge? That being the knowledge of good and evil? Go, Danny. Go, Danny. Go. Sorry. The Garden of Eden didn't used to be this elaborate. In fact, it used to be smaller. Once the segment ended, we got up to get in line to go outside. I saw my parents and waved. They saw that I was with my friends and Flynn and signaled that I could go and stay with them. So, we went out of the church, through a hallway to a closed-off section. And then, a voice stopped us. Hey all, Jack said. Jack! You helped uncover the drawing. Why not join the group? But what are you doing here? Never mind that. I thought you'd never ask. Where to next? Well, you, you and I have been here before. Remember that old room where the garden used to be? Well, we need to get in there. But I bet the door is locked. I can get you in there. The reason I'm actually here is because I'm on assignment for the local news station. I'm doing a story on the whole church and the production. I'm just getting some shots. Let's go. So you kind of did make it after all. I thought you said you couldn't come, but I guess I understand that you're working. I held my group back in the hallway just for a second. Jack unlocked one of the rooms, and when we all went in, the room was pitch black, and I flipped on the light switch to see something extremely familiar. Sometimes there's actually a guy that played the devil, and he was really good at it. Evil like nobody's business. Anyway, we made our way from the gymnasium to the church to watch the opening Garden of Eden. I then heard the narrator say, or I guess sing, this. That was it. The song, I hope, did know that there were two more words after those three, but this is Little Town, so what could that mean? Guys, I heard another one, I then whispered. Danny, it's okay. I heard it too, Samantha said. Soon everyone else in my group stated that they heard it too. Maybe this is contagious. Perhaps this had something to do with the word little. Also, why would the narrator stop and have this song come in? Then I thought, little? Tree? Little room with a tree? Of knowledge? That being the knowledge of good and evil? Go, Danny. Go, Danny. Go. Sorry. The Garden of Eden didn't used to be this elaborate. In fact, it used to be smaller. Once the segment ended, we got up to get in line to go outside. I saw my parents and waved. They saw that I was with my friends and Flynn and signaled that I could go and stay with them. So, we went out of the church, through a hallway to a closed-off section. And then, a voice stopped us. Hey all, Jack said. Jack! You helped uncover the drawing. Why not join the group? But what are you doing here? Never mind that. I thought you'd never ask. Where to next? Well, you, you and I have been here before. Remember that old room where the garden used to be? Well, we need to get in there. But I bet the door is locked. I can get you in there. The reason I'm actually here is because I'm on assignment for the local news station. I'm doing a story on the whole church and the production. I'm just getting some shots. Let's go. So you kind of did make it after all. I thought you said you couldn't come, but I guess I understand that you're working. I held my group back in the hallway just for a second. Jack unlocked one of the rooms, 
and when we all went in, the room was pitch black, and I flipped on the light switch to see something extremely familiar. <laughs> 